Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and lovely. At least it's usually midweek. Uh, this is a later in the week episode because, uh, as you can probably hear from my voice, I'm just getting over something. Um, I'm fine again now, but earlier in the week there wouldn't have been much of a voice to record with. Um, I promised on last week's show that we were going to have a project-heavy show this week, and we are. However, it's not going to be purely projects because two pieces of news came out that we cannot ignore. A new board from Arduino, the Giga board, which is every every kind of Giga you could imagine, and a new camera from Raspberry Pi, which we will be covering briefly on the show, uh, and, and a whole lot of projects, including the winners of the first Electromaker of the month of 2023 and the new product of the week from Electromaker. So with all of that to get through, let's get on with the show. Now, we are going to start the show with a couple of bits of quick news and one funding website thing. Um, but then we're going to get on to uh, projects and other stuff because uh, that's what I want to spend the bulk of the show doing. But yes, um, Arduino just released a new board. So let's just jump straight in and talk about that. So the Arduino Giga R1 is here. The, well, the Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi is its full name. I'm just going to call it the Arduino Giga board for now. Um, and it looks a little bit like the Arduino Mega, doesn't it? Or the Due? Or the Due? They called it the, I just called it the Due, but it's the Due. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a reason for that. It's, it's the same form factor. It's the same idea, but with a lot more stuff in it. Um, so in short, um, I'm not going to go through all the massive details right now for a couple of reasons. One, um, there's a blog article here that does that um, uh, on the Electromaker website. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, but uh, also because hopefully next week at Embedded World, I will be able to get my hands on one and be able to talk to someone from Arduino about it. I'm not sure. That's not confirmed yet, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that. So, you know, I'll do that then. But in short, this is everything that the Arduino Due had in that it's 3.3 volt tolerant. Um, although I don't know if it, exactly what the deal is. Yeah, the Due had a 32 bit I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with my Arduino memory right now. The Duo was the one with just a 32-bit microcontroller on it, not a Linux-based system. So it's, yeah, it's very much the spiritual successor to the Duo, um, and, uh, but it has the mega form factor. This is the same size as the mega as well. Um, and uh, the big difference being much more powerful controller. It has a camera and a display port on it. It has a 3.5 millimeter jack socket on it, um, which is connected up presumably to the DAX. Um, you can do a lot with this. Now, of course, me being me, I'm immediately thinking huge amount of input and output possibilities and an audio socket synthesizer of course i am synthesizer but that's just me but yes um i'll go into more detail about it another time but if you would like to know more there's this blog post here we link out to the arduino store now you can get one for um what was the dollar amount again i only know it in euros it was 72 dollars and 82 cents so it's funny it's kind of up there in price towards the arduino pro range but this is the normal arduino range however this is probably the board out of the arduino range so far that can do stuff that the pro range can also do but since this is a normal range arduino board it's probably going to be documented a little bit better and a little bit more friendlier to beginners so yeah, I mean, make of that what you will. Um, I I'm just kind of I, I I it just blindsided me. I wasn't expecting a new mega form factor board from Arduino, and I don't even know why. I don't know why I would have expectations for what Arduino would do, but um, it's kind of blindsided me. I'm kind of excited about it. I have already bought one. Um, one is on its way to me. I didn't want to uh, uh, wait and hope that I would get a hold of one um, and by other ways. And uh, I'm looking forward to having a bit of a play with it. Um, but yes, uh, like I said, synthesizer is the first thing that came to my mind. The other thing, of course, is since uh, this has a camera and a display port um, and and a, uh, and a 3.5 millimeter jack. This is the kind of thing that might work really nicely for some kind of kiosk-based thing as well, although I haven't really looked at the documentation enough to really know about that or not. Um, but yes, uh, if you are a fan of the Mega and Due form factor, this board will really appeal to you. There's a link in the description to my article about it. Raspberry Pi have released a camera module, and no, I'm not talking about the camera module version 3 that was released what feels like just a couple of weeks ago, but it's actually back in January. Um, they have released a global shutter camera. Now, this is going to be useful for a number of people, but mostly in the field of machine vision, um, but also when you're photographing anything particularly quick. If you ever suffered from global, uh, sorry, rolling shutter artifacts, then you'll know what I mean. As someone who's had to deal with this in cameras for various things over the years, I'm very excited about this. Not that I have any use for this presently, um, but yes, uh, rolling shutter artifacts, if I was to explain it as simply as I could, come from the way that cameras work. I'm going to explain this wrong, but it's the easiest way to understand. If you imagine any camera scanning down an image as it as it captures that image, um, it sends one line to the analog to digital converter each time because cameras are sensors just like anything else. Um, and then they get converted at different times, which means you get these weird artifacts as this animation shows quite nicely. Um, the uh, global shutter cameras uh, have a different little storage unit for every single 
single pixel so that it all gets captured at exactly the same time. You lose a little bit of resolution, but it doesn't particularly matter because if you're feeding that into a machine learning algorithm, you're going to downscale that anyway because, no, as far as I know, no one is trying to do fast inferencing in a factory setting at 4K or a 1080p or anything like that. I think people are downscaling everything. I might be wrong about that. Anyway, this is a, a fantastic article from Eben that says what I've just said, but in a far uh, easier to read and easier to pass format, and it has links to where you can get the new camera as well. It also has um, a video of it in action, which is kind of fun, because again, this is something that shows rolling shutter perfectly, guitar strings. This is another perfect example. And there it is with the global shutter, and that explains it pretty perfectly, actually. You can see all of the strings are moving as they should move now, rather than that weird wibbly-wobbly thing you get with a normal camera lens. Anyway, I will leave it at that. Link in the description. We're going to do a very quick funding website things to talk about Rioty. Um, I wasn't going to do one on this week's show. I wanted to save the time for, uh, for project stuff, but this grabbed my attention, and it's not something that I can really ignore because it's something I'm sort of mildly passionate about. Because um, batteries are amazing, right? Um, everything we have uh, has batteries in them, um, and we're, more and more things are requiring batteries each year. Now that we have super low power sensing and even super low power edge AI, more things are being run on battery, um, be them lithium cells, be them 18650, which is also lithium but a different form factor, even coin cell batteries batteries. Um, all of these batteries are going out into the world, and um, in an ideal world, they're getting recycled. They're getting, uh, or at least disposed of, in a way that is kind of relevant, um, uh, rational, you know, good. We're supposed to put the batteries in the battery thing at the supermarket, or we're supposed to take them to a certain place. The reality of it is not many people are going to do that. Um, people don't follow that advice. It's hard enough to get people to recycle, so people are throwing batteries in the bins, and depending on what country you're in, those batteries may well be making them, you know, making their way into incinerators, um, because, again, no matter how how much we'd like to believe that our rubbish is well sorted, um, you're paying people not very much to do a very dirty job um, and expecting them to do it perfectly. It's not very fair, um, you know. And so batteries are great, but when you don't have to use them, don't. <laughs> That's my little soapbox moment. <laughs> and this is exactly what Rioty is. This is an open source platform for the battery-free Internet of Things, which is something I'm super excited about. Um, essentially, it is a little module in here which is designed to uh, work on an incredibly low amount of power and a variable input power source, and a number of shields that we'll get into in just a moment. So this is the real star of the show here, the Rioty module. Um, if I scoop down here to the block diagram, you will see it is a boost charger, a buck regulator, a couple of comparators, um, and the wireless MCU, in this case a Nordic NRF 52833, um, and a little real-time clock, and a bunch of digital I.O. here, and a couple of analog pins as well. Um, and the thing itself is designed specifically to work on low power with no batteries involved whatsoever. Now, you can, of course, plug it into the USB to program it and stuff like that, hence having a little RP2040 on here. In this case, the RP2040 is a, a coprocessor for programming, for debugging. That's what it's being used for. In fact, um, in the last show, when I talked about the Pico, the RP2040 debugger, the Raspberry Pi debugger that they released, and the fact that you could just turn a Pico into a debugger. That's essentially what they're doing here. They've turned this into a little uh, chip that can program and debug the uh, Rioty module. Um, but you can buy the module just by itself. Now, this is definitely worth a read. They make some of the points that I just made probably in a much better way about why you should go battery-free. Um, according to the EPA, the waste from batteries adds to up to 180 tonnes per year in the US alone. Most of this toxic waste gets burned. Or end up yeah, exactly what I was just saying. Just get you don't want batteries getting burnt, especially like nickel-cadmium batteries. You don't want cadmium just going into the atmosphere then settling. That sounds terrible. Um, and with lithium, I don't even know what that would do. I don't know enough about it. Um, so, uh, here is, yes, the, the module itself. However, they also have a number of headers to make it easy to get started. Uh, this is a lovely one. This is a, a little solar module, which allows you uh, to uh, get a, a bit of solar power from it. Um, and it's, um, it's amazing. It, from what it mentions, the solar power alone on a overcast day should be enough for running just the module itself with some basic sensing, as far as I understand from reading this. Um, and uh, here is uh, the sensor shield, which has a few sensors on it, an accelerometer, and humidity sensor, a microphone with a power switch, which is kind of interesting, and a capacitor shield. So um, the module itself uh, obviously has some caps inside it for storing charge. Um, that's in, probably inside either the boost converter or the regulator. I don't know enough about the electronic side of it to know. Um, but yes, uh, this is a couple of beefy capacitors that will add to the amount of charge that this thing can harvest. And then a probe, um, which allows you to just stick the module onto a PCB or a breadboard or whatever, and then still program it. Again, there's your RP2040 module just there. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. If you are like me and you find this uh, a important thing, 
a small important thing, but an important thing alongside all the environmental things that are happening. I think this is something that you might be interested in. Um, this is already in its funding stage. Um, they've made five grand. They're looking for 19 grand. You can get the module itself for $55. Uh, you can get the Riot board um, for $89, which has the, the RP2040 on it. Um, and there's the various other shields as well. Um, this is your not weekly, but maybe monthly reminder that there is a big difference between ordering cheap development boards from AliExpress and boards like this from smaller projects who are making them themselves. Um, the costs are wildly different. Um, and yeah, getting this thing up to market is going to cost a lot more um, for various reasons than getting a clone of a clone of a board up onto a different place. They both have their uses. I'm not saying don't get clone boards, but don't say that this is expensive either. Uh, it's, yeah, if, if anything, I think this is actually kind of amazing that you can get this whole kit for how much when you add it all up together? 49 plus 35 plus 35 plus, yeah, for under $200, you could get the entire kit and all of the headers to pretty much go batteryless. So it's definitely worth thinking about. Uh, anyway, I spent longer on this than I meant to, but as I said, I couldn't really ignore it. What better than a project-based episode than to talk about the Electromaker of the Month contest? Because uh, this is our project-based contest, and it's an ongoing contest that happens every month. Now, I know that uh, regular viewers of the show will know about this, and maybe slightly sick of hearing about it by now. However, there's a good reason I talk about it a lot. Because if you are new here, and you're watching the show for maybe the first time, firstly, hello, welcome, it's lovely to have you here. Um, uh, but yeah, you might not know how to enter the Electromaker of the Month. So, very quickly, every month we give away prizes to the first, second, and third uh, ranked projects on the site and that is done by a panel of independent judges thank goodness I don't have to do it and then the first prize winner will win $150 in Amazon gift vouchers plus some uh, rather tidy Electromaker swag here um, and second and third place win um, $100 and $50 a piece and the way you enter it is just by uploading your projects to the site um, under the community tab we have a project page and these are all community projects and if you have a free Electromaker account you can click upload your projects and upload to the site and it is based on the documentation of that project. You don't have to be someone who's doing the most amazing project in the world. It could be the first thing you've ever done with an Arduino. But if you document it well and with passion, the judges will be equally as impressed with that as something that is super complicated. Now, um, all of this is covered in this article here. I'll be leaving a link to it in the description. But let's look at the winners for February 2023. In third place is Donuts or Else with, well, the chart says it all. A distance sensor, a moisture sensor, and a servo, and an Arduino equals romance. How? Well, you can use that to make an automatic wine pourer. Um, and yes, uh, since the month uh, of uh, February had Valentine's Day in it, this was a, a cheekily Valentine's Day-oriented uh, project. Uh, you can see a video write-up of it uh, from Donuts or Else right here. And of course, the obligatory mat you have to put under your wine in case it spills. What could be more romantic than that? But yes, congratulations, Donuts. You are the third prize winner this month. You'll be winning a $50 Amazon gift voucher and, of course, some tidy Electromaker swag. Um, and uh, yes, I, I am very much in favor of all kinds of automatic drink pourers. But uh, yeah, managing to tie this one into Valentine's Day was quite fun. In second place is Mitun.das with the AI thermal camera for safe camping. Now this uses a Seed Wio terminal um, and a nice 3D printed shell, as you can probably see here if I'm not blocking it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think it's a, a, first things first, I just think it's a fantastic proof of concept design. It looks really nice. Um, uh, and the idea here is, as, it, as the name suggests, is it's an AI thermal camera. But what it actually does is it uses a model that was trained in the previous iteration of this same project to determine whether the camera is seeing a human or something that isn't a human approaching the well, the camera. Uh, so you could set this thing outside your tent door if you're ca uh, camping out in the wilderness, and it will set off an alarm if it detects something approaching your tent that isn't a human. Or maybe is a human if you want it to be that way, of course. You can set it the way that you want. Um, yeah, it's just an incredibly complex project, but it's also really well documented. Um, and like I said, this is uh, something that has, is, you know, this is the second iteration of it, and there is detailed instructions in the first iteration as to how they actually um, uh, programmed, no, sorry, trained the model on the Wii terminal, for the Wii terminal as well using Edge Impulse. Um, it's just a really wonderful put together proof of concept. And again, like I say, I know it shouldn't particularly matter, but I really do like the fact that it's in um, this quite nice purpose built 3D printed case uh, that incorporates the camera and the aerial in a somewhat weatherproof format. I mean, it's not going to su survive a rainstorm, but uh, yeah, I really like this. Um, so yeah, congratulations, Mitten.das. You win the $100 Amazon gift voucher and of course the tidy pile of Electromaker swag. 
But taking first prize for February 2023 in Electromaker of the Month is Pradeep Logu Zero. Now, that's probably not how you pronounce your username. It's just the closest I could come to. How do you say Loganaut? Loganaut? Oh, that's kind of it. Pradeep Loganaut. That's kind of cool. Um, either way, uh, this is a fantastic proof of concept. Uh, this is a product quality analyzer, uh, which uses machine vision uh, in order to determine whether something is of, up to standard. And the idea you could use this in a production line. Um, so uh, it uses a Blues wireless note card, which is a cellular IoT device, which makes this something that doesn't need to be connected to a wireless network, it doesn't need Bluetooth. Wherever you can get cell phone coverage, this would technically work. Um, but this, as I say, is just the proof of concept. The products uh, here are actually images of products on a computer screen. Now, this also uses a Latte Panda Delta, which is a single board computer I raved about a fair bit last year because I, I really do like it. It's an x86 single board computer that can use Windows or Linux, but it also has um, an 80 mega 32U4 chip built into it, um, which means that it basically is an x86 computer with GPIO pins, um, um, which is, yeah, it's just kind of useful. In this case, it's being used to trigger a relay to turn a light on or off. Although, again, it could be used in an industrial setting to trigger um, the process for taking a product out of the production line if it isn't up to the right quality. That's what I mean. This is a, a fully working uh, prototype. It's just being done in a very clever way on a desk. So um, I'm not going to go through the entire details of the project, partially because I think I wouldn't do it justice. This is a fantastic write-up that goes through every single section of how this thing works. Um, and, and it doesn't just say how they did it. it links out to things like tutorials they followed to learn how to do certain parts of it. It really is a journey that you go on with them that comes out with this amazing finished prototype idea. So, in short, as well as the uh, Blues Wireless note card carrier for cellular IoT communication and the Latte Panda Delta for x86 computing, plus doing something with a relay or doing something, yeah, it, it could be setting up a light in a control room, for example, or it could be setting up some machinery or whatever. We also have this, which is the M5 Stack Unit V2. Now, this is an Edge AI camera module. It's specifically just a camera, but it can do AI inferencing in and of itself. So you could attach this to any other microcontroller, any other computer, and it wouldn't take up that uh, thing's processing power. So if you want to think about the logic of how this system works, um, if I go back up to that image right at the very top, and hopefully I'm not too much in the way of it, if I move myself out of the way a little, you can see there's the camera which is pointing at the screen. It's deciding whether this bottle is up to scratch or not, and if it isn't, it's sending a message to the Blues Wireless note card that pings a server. That server is also speaking to the Latte Panda Delta, and the Latte Panda Delta is going to turn a light on or off. So the idea here is you have a completely connected automation line here. Because you could have, um, I think earlier on, I, I, I perhaps falsely said that the Latte Panda Delta could be the thing that takes this thing out of the production line. I don't think that's necessarily uh, what would happen. What would happen is the Edge AI unit would say, this one is wrong, and whatever is connected to the Blues Wireless note card could perhaps trigger a relay locally to take it out of the production line, but you still get that ping of a cellular IoT ping that means that whether your factory has Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or not, or it doesn't matter if it's a factory, you could be producing things at home even. You could do, use this on a uh, on, a, on one of those rolling 3D printers that can print forever. Um, uh, but you also get um, a signal on a, uh, a local computer. And as it says here, if you use the Latte Panda Delta, that could even light up things um, in a control room, for example. Just a really well thought out, fully put together proof of concept that someone's done at home. A really cool idea. So congratulations, Pradeep. You are the number one prize winner for Electromaker of the Month. You're winning $150 in Amazon gift vouchers and, of course, the Electromaker swag. Um, and you'll be seeing these projects on our social media pages over the coming days. Um, you'll also uh, yeah, uh, be hearing about it probably in our newsletter, and you'll be seeing uh, lots of Electromaker of the Month projects as the years go on. I really love this contest. It means I get to be enthusiastic about people's projects, and they get to win money, uh, well, Amazon gift vouchers for doing so, uh, for making their projects too. And there's a bunch more projects showing up in here as well, and I'm really looking forward to talking about them as and when, perhaps some of them later in this very show, depending on how much time I have. Now, a couple of episodes ago, we celebrated our 100th episode, and we decided we'd do a special giveaway. Now, we were scheduled to give away the Argon 1 M.2 Raspberry Pi 4 case, uh, which is an awesome thing to give away. Anyway, it's an aluminium-bodied Raspberry Pi case, which has an M.2 SATA slot in it for a hard drive, takes care of heat dissipation. It's a really good case. But we decided we kind of up the ante a little bit, what with it being episode 100, and give away a huge pile of stuff, um, including a Raspberry Pi Pico, because who doesn't love the Raspberry Pi Pico? Um, and uh, also one of these lovely little Siege Studio Jam 
DAO boards. This is the ESP32 C3 variant, which is their Risk Five wireless board, and it comes with a little aerial, which is in the case just there, and a couple of uh, buttons here as well. Um, and it, yeah, I love I love these tiny little boards. They're really uh, really fun. Um, also, the uh, Nordic NRF7002 development kit. This is the development kit featuring their Wi-Fi 6 IC. It also has the uh, uh, NRF52840 on it, I believe, as the driver chip, because the uh, the IC is a companion IC. And in a weird way, this is sort of um, a very uh, limited thing to own because we got sent this before this was released. This was the final hardware revision, so this is exactly the same hardware as the development kits that went out, but it got sent to us before anyone even knew it existed, before it was even announced. So in a weird way, this is sort of a collector's item if you're into that kind of thing. But the real collector's item is the Arduino Uno Mini Limited Edition that Arduino put out to celebrate 10 years of Arduino. Um, these are really lovely little things, and they aren't. And there's not much points to them, and that's what I love. That's the idea of it being a limited edition device. Um, it is a, a tiny, tiny Arduino Uno, uh, which has the uh, SMD version of the AT Mega 328P on it instead, and a USB Type C connector, um, and it has mini Arduino. They're actually covered because this 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 version is the one that I've been very careful with. I've got my own one that I used for the photo on last week's show, but I put it away again. Um, and uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a miniature Arduino Uno that you could get, and each one of them has a nice thank you from the Arduino. Team team in it and a serial number um, and uh, yeah when they came out I thought I want one and I thought I'm gonna have to give one of these away at some point to the Electromaker community and I believe this is the second one I've given away which means that I only have my own one left so if I want to gift another one I'll have to gift mine which I hope I don't ever have to do <laughs> um, anyway um, this uh, is a pile of prizes we had um, uh, the, among a couple of other things this wasn't all of it there was a thingy 91 there was um, a, a compute stick from Intel I believe as well uh, a huge pile of stuff and all of that stuff is now going to go to one lucky person person. Um, the way this competition worked is that you leave a hashtag, you're subscribed to the channel, you leave a hashtag and you say what you do with it. But for big competitions like this, we give things away generally at random um, because it's just the fairest way to do it. It all goes into an Excel spreadsheet, all the names do, and then um, all the duplicates are taken out again. And then we say, okay, this. Um, and one small point, for electronic competitions so far, it's been pretty fair. No one's been duplicating things. There's been no obvious bots. It's been pretty cool. We seem to have a pretty cool community. Awesome. Anyway, it is time, finally, after all this waffling, to announce the winner. And the winner is Colin Russell Conway, which actually pleases me a lot, because Colin, I know you've been watching this show since pretty much day one. In fact, there's a lot of people that turned up in the comments of the 100th show who have been commenting consistently since I started this show, and it was you guys in the early days that were basically telling me, you're doing a good job, keep going. It was pretty much that that allowed me to have the confidence to continue doing this for so long, so thank you so much for that. But yes, Colin, congratulations, you have won this, um, and this is the wonderful comment that you left. Um, what wouldn't I do with the kit? Which is a good answer. I'd be busy for the next year in dev stuff um, with all that stuff. So with the CGL you already have a use for, I've created a little device that hooks up to MS Teams and shows the presence on a couple of NeoPixels. I call it the PUNC, pronounced punk. Presence USB notification contraption. It also looks like it's got a mohawk, hence the name, punk. I'm planning on sticking it on the Electromaker community as well when I've got the documentation done. The Argon case I'd certainly use for my Raspberry Pi, it would keep it a little safer than the 3D printed case that keeps getting knocked off the shelf by my kids, hard relate, <laughs> but I'd definitely get an M2 module to use with it as well. I've got a few Picos already and I'm interested in doing some educational classes with the local primary school, so I'd certainly like to have a few more to give to the school to use after I show the kids how to use it. And the Arduino I'd probably frame. I got my first Uno 10 years ago and I rediscovered my love for electronics almost instantly and it sparked a hobby that's kept me busy for the guts of the last decade. And I very much agree with that sentiment. The Arduino Uno back in the day, along with the very first Raspberry Pi I got, um, started me along the path to do this, to talk about it every week. Um, and, uh, and it's an absolute pleasure to continue to do so. Uh, thank you for everybody who commented on last week's show. Thank you for everybody who, um, uh, sorry, on the 100th episode, which is now two shows ago. Thank you for everyone who entered this contest. There will be many more contests on Electromaker. We're not going to be stopping giving away stuff anytime soon. Um, so there'll be the giveaways on the show as normal. Just to remind you, we do have Electromaker of the Month. Um, which we may have already talked about in this episode or not, I'm not certain. Um, and uh, that is a, a rolling competition for any project that goes up on the site. Um, and there are winners chosen each month based on various uh, different things. We have a panel of judges who aren't just looking for like the best, most complex project. It's how well it's documented is important. And also passion. We really are interested in just, if, if it's the first time you've been in LED Blink and you're excited about it, show us that excitement through an Electromaker community project and you could just as easily win as someone who's come up with an agricultural dom 
donkey robot machine. Um, I don't know why whenever I go for complexity, I go for agricultural animal robots. <laughs> I always seem to do that. Anyway, uh, we do have another contest, however, starting this week, and it is linked to our product of the week. So let's take a quick look at that now. Yes, the product of the week is the Adafruit Pi Gamer. Now, um, the name Pi Gamer is PY for Python, not PI for uh, Raspberry Pi, because this is um, a micro Python based retro game development board. It has a little color screen and it has a couple of buttons on it. However, I'm not going to tell you much about it now because if you head to our blog or head to the link in our description, which I will be leaving there, you will find the product of the week episode that is made by uh, my compatriot and uh, the gadget guru and electromaker, Robin Mitchell. He is also the engineer who's been making the electromaker educator videos. And yeah, if you'd like to know everything you need to know about the Adafruit Pi Gamer Kit, you can find it out from this video. Um, the Pi Gamer Kit is one of many retro gaming kind of consoles that I find interesting, but the thing I like about this one so much is that it's it's just very simple. Um, you can make this, uh, you can program it yourself completely from scratch uh, using Arduino code, using Python code, um, but there's also um, a way of uh, programming using block codes in order to uh, come up with a variety of different kinds of games. It's a really nice touch, it's a really nice way of doing it, and it's an Adafruit product as well, and they generally make these things accessible to a range of skill sets. Oh, it might not be a very professional thing to throw into the middle of a show, especially when I'm about, supposed to be talking about product of the week, but there's very few things that are more horrible than realizing that your tea bag is burst when you're like near the bottom of a cup of tea. And then <laughs> it's been getting stronger and stronger as I go. Blah, 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 blah. Now, as always with Product of the Week, Robin gives a full rundown of what this is and why you might want to buy one. Um, but also, as always with Product of the Week, we're going to give one away. Now, if you are interested in uh, in being a part of this, it's the same rules pretty much as anything else. Um, if you are a subscriber to the Electromaker YouTube channel and you leave the hashtag, hashtag? The hashtag PyGamer, that's P-Y-G-A-M-E-R, Py is in Python, Gamer. Um, and uh, maybe just a little description of what you would do with this if you got it. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, for very various reasons nowadays we tend to just take everyone who has entered and choose a prize winner at random but it really is nice for me to know what you would like to do with it if that makes sense um but yes uh, if you leave the uh, hashtag pie gamer uh, along with what you would do with it and uh, we will be choosing a winner for that um not necessarily next week because we're going to be away at a conference at embedded world although i might be able to get out a show next week but um if not it will be the week after um and yes um you could walk home with a well not walk home you could be in your home and receive through the post an adafruit pie gamer kit in order to create your own retro games on and of course at the end of the day you have to remember this is just an 80 sam 50 80 mega sam 51 chip i believe um with a, a few buttons and a joystick and a screen attached to it uh, you don't have to do games with this at all if you don't want to if you know how to program that particular chip and it's an 80 mega chip so it's not particularly out of the ordinary and again it's arduino ide you could just set it up in the arduino ide and say buttons joystick screen do something completely different a very difficult to use cycle through words text editor <laughs> vim without a keyboard <laughs> i don't know you, you can make whatever you want with it is the point and um, but yes we'll be announcing the winners of this contest in a couple of episodes no not a couple of episodes a couple of weeks next week we're at a conference then there'll be an episode in a couple of weeks in the next episode <laughs> Now, 314 Reactor has posted several projects on the Electromaker uh, site over the years, um, uh, but the Artificial Life one is one that's actually been posted three times. While this says Artificial Life 2, this is the third iteration, sort of, of uh, the Cellular Automaton project. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with the idea of cell Cellular automa Automata? Automaton? Automatons? I don't know the plural. <laughs> cellular Automaton plural. Cellular Automata. So, cellular automata are uh, things that appear like life forms. That's the general idea. Now, there's no real life there, obviously. It's a, a programmed logic that decides how they act. But when you look at this, uh, this is a gif of the thing in action. Um, it is sort of amazing, really, the way that these things move around. It does give you some kind of, like, overview of some kind of weird ant colony or some kind of, yeah, who knows. Um, and the general idea behind it is that they move using predetermined traits, some randomness, but some of it can be trait-based. And then when they meet another pixel, they will either fight or try to breed with that pixel again based on various traits and when they do manage to breed those traits will be passed on and obviously ones that get killed don't pass their traits on so there's a certain level of kind of uh, programmed evolution there and you can set it going and see where it ends up um, and this is the video that 314 Reactor made about it and I, I, I suggest you go and watch this because it also gives a very nice intro to the uh, to the project 314 goes through exactly where it came from where it's going um, and uh, various demos of it as well and the demos are the kind of thing that I could really watch all day <laughs> I, I, I love this uh, I do actually have one of these very 62 by 32 
two hub displays. Um, I don't know if it's as easy to use as the Pimeroni one that they are using here, um, but uh, as, yeah, it's certainly something I'd be interested in. So if you are interested in finding out more, do head to the link in the description. I'll be leaving it there. Um, you can find out how to install this on your own Raspberry Pi. It also um, is, uh, uh, you can use this with various different forms as well. So um, this project started using the Pimeroni Unicorn hat, which is an eight by eight hat, which slots right on top of your Raspberry Pi. Um, and there is an HD version of that hat as well. Um, and uh, which obviously has a much higher pixel density, which again sits right on top of your Raspberry Pi. Um, and there is now the large LED panel version that they are running as well. This tutorial will tell you how to uh, set up either the uh, main um, version that they have running here or the older versions too. They did have to do some switching around and changing of the code to make it work. But the thing that's nice about this is that this is a project that is designed to be shared. Um, you can install this on your Raspberry Pi and get it up and running today if you just follow the instructions right here. Um, and of course, as mentioned, um, there is a full video uh, on it as, as well from 314 Reactor on their own channel. So if you would like to know more, you can head and watch that video too. Um, so I'll leave a link to this in the description. This is Emily's Electric Oddities. And this is the bird box, which is inspired by Japanese train stations, which apparently play bird song, which is absolutely wonderful. That's something I'd never heard of before. Um, and uh, as you can see, the user interface is relatively simple. I'm assuming that's a volume knob, and then you get the options of bird or no bird, and it makes bird sound whenever it detects something on the PIR sensor. And it is in a very lovely little box. Emily's channel is a treasure trove of this kind of stuff, and I know I say that quite a lot, but she's made some absolutely wonderful things over time. Um, notably, I remember her making a, a, a moving sort of weeble wobble hanging synthesizer that made sound by the way you moved it. Um, more recently, she's made an optical decoder for old film, which is kind of an amazing video. In fact, it's one of my favorite videos of hers, just how she approached the idea of making it. So if you're not already subscribed, Emily's Electric Oddities, I massively recommend it. There'll be a link in the description. Now moving on to a project from Gula Mertuza, who also goes on YouTube by the name of The Good Gamer, or The Good Gamma. Um, and uh, rather than me uh, go into a huge amount of detail about what this is, I just want to let him show you. So yes, this is a piano that you play with your hands, albeit a tone that comes out of an Arduino, and you hold your hand up to a camera, and it detects a number of fingers using OpenCV. Um, this is just a wonderful idea for a simple Im implementation of getting sound out of an Arduino and using OpenCV, which isn't to say that this isn't a difficult thing to do. I'm not sure that I could just out of nowhere make this happen. Uh, this is still a fantastic project, and yeah, congratulations for putting it together. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about this, uh, you're going to want to head to the video and click on the video. Um, in this Electromega project page. I'll leave a link to it um, because in the um, uh, uh, description of the video is the link out to the GitHub. And this is where you will find the Arduino code along with the Piano Maker. Um, and I think the hand tracking module might be something that comes out of... Um OpenCV itself, or maybe not, I'm not really sure. But the beauty of it is, is that even without a tutorial as to how to put this all together, the theory behind it is relatively simple. Because what's happening here is that there is the, um, there's the hand movement itself, as you can see here, and that is being detected by OpenCV. The value it's seeing, whether it's a three or a two or a one, is being sent via serial to the Arduino, and the Arduino is just running a loop, and every loop is going to play a tone, and depending on what number it receives via the serial port, that's what tone it is going Going to play. It's a it's a actually surprisingly simple theoretical way of doing it. Like I said, it doesn't make this an easy project. I don't want to belittle the fact that this probably took some time to put together. But yeah, it's just a wonderful project. I just really like the idea about it. I love the uh, idea of kind of saying how can I just combine these two things I have together into a fun demonstration of something that's quite complicated, like uh, re gesture recognition and you know yeah the number of fingers you are holding up and different ways to control sound because of course you know how much I love things like that. I cannot quite believe that we haven't talked about this on the show yet. I've wanted to, but I've run out of time several times. But these are custom Lego bricks that, well, just watch. 
that's uh, yeah, that's a port of doom on a, on a Lego brick. Um, so the bottom brick um, houses a battery and a couple of other things. Um, uh, perhaps the actual board itself as well. This is running on an RP2040. Um, and uh, yeah, it has a tiny battery pack in there, an RP2040. And this is one of many modifications that James Brown, whose YouTube channel name is uh, Ancient, has made to Lego blocks. Um, you can find a full write-up of it on his channel. I'll leave a link to this video in the description. If you head through and click on the name, of course, you can head through and find out everything else about it. But yeah, I, I, I can't believe that we haven't acknowledged this on the show so far. I've freaked out about this so many times, but it's just never found its way into an Electromaker script. Yeah, Doom on a Lego block with accelerometer movement, capacitive touch buttons for shooting and for opening doors. What a world. What a wonderful world. That has been our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Next week, we will be at the Embedded World Conference down in Nuremberg, which is a huge embedded conference for... It's a world of embedded things. <laughs> uh, if you saw our footage from it last year, or maybe our footage from Electronica in November, you'll know what that is like. Um, it is a huge conference full of uh, various different people, uh, uh, some on the industry side, some on the hobby side. Um, and there'll be some stuff we've talked about in the show um, that is in terms of new releases and new things that are coming out, which will probably be there on the floor. And we'll be able to speak to some interesting folks who actually had a hand in making those things which is always interesting um, so there probably won't be a normal electromaker show next week unless i manage to sneak something together in between the cracks of the conference although there are very few cracks i've come to learn um, in my time going to conferences recently um, but i'll see what i can do um, if not there will be plenty of videos up on the electromaker channel to enjoy um, and i hope you do but in terms of a normal electromaker show i'll probably see you in a couple of weeks until then i hope you have a safe fun and creative time and i'll chat to you soon <laughs>